some parts have arrived I went and got the drums resurfaced and these brakes right here I was just gonna get the shoes and springs and stuff if you'll remember guys but I ended up getting this whole assembly back and plate and everything for like 38 bucks so I got both sides hey guys welcome back to my channel I am the one and only Kentucky Yankee and I'm going to be your host on this trailer repair endeavor um, I've already made part one of this video so if you hadn't seen it I will leave a link in the description below so you can check that out and today we're gonna to be starting to assemble all the stuff we took apart on this trailer on the previous video let's start with the axle right here that doesn't have the brakes on it this is all the parts except for the seal for this hub assembly so now we're just gonna get them all these parts cleaned up and here's a reminder guys keep the bearings with the hub don't mix them up on different wheels I should have mentioned that earlier and if you didn't it's no big deal just I would still assemble them some people might argue with me on that but anyhow what we need to do now is get all these parts cleaned up in some solvent and what I've got here today is gasoline often referred to as ethyl or petrol I am now going to show you how not to dry your parts especially wheel bearings if you do it this way you could rip your fingers right off your hands this is not an OSHA approved way of doing things if you are a safety Sally please look away and again I live dangerously you shouldn't be a safety Sally now the bearings are all cleaned up and dry we need to inspect them and what are we looking for we're looking for pitting discoloration anything like that that would indicate this is a bad bearing and needs to be replaced and unfortunately can you see that guys right there by my fingers see that that's what we're looking for guess what this is a bad wheel bearing and you have to you spin these around see sometimes it's only on one side see right there it's bad another thing to check for is to check this inside race and the way you do that is you hold the bearing like that if you hold these bearings kind of tight you can roll this race around and feel if it feels smooth if it's smooth most likely the race inside there's good if it's rough if you can feel it rough then it's probably bad by holding these outside bearings stiff you're you're gliding that inside race against them and if it's rough it'll feel rough this is the race inside of here and I'll show you how we're gonna replace it because I'm gonna replace the bearings and races you know as a set and this one too you look for pitting whoop you look for pitting discoloration stuff like that this is actually smooth but it just it still doesn't look good to me the bearings bad anyways we'll just replace all of them well I have good news I'm headed back from the parts store and I bought one bearing and one race so that's good news for me because I only had to buy one bearing and one race I don't just buy parts because they make them and sell them and this is good for you folks because I'll be able to demonstrate how to replace a race on one of the hubs and if you can do one you can do them all that's the new bearing race and it is located inside this hub there's one on each side for each bearing can you see it in there I can't tell about this shadows and stuff anyways what you have to do is get behind the back side of it and tap it out very simple and there's the race and a part that I was tapping on would be this you know around this edge right here so there's the new one and same way we'll just stick her in there and it's the wrong size so we get to go back to the parts store and get the right one I'm back now with what I hope to be the right part we will set that right there and there and I think I will use this old race to get it started and we just tap it in there it's 
So just keep tapping it in there till you hear it bottom out. Feel it, hear it, you'll feel it and hear it. And the race will bottom out inside of the hub. Now that we've got all these parts cleaned up, uh, it's time to pack these wheel bearings with grease. And a lot of guys use these bearing tools. All you have to do, like on this one, you set this on there, you spin this down, lock it down, and then you put your grease gun on the end of it, pump it full of grease, it forces the grease into the bearing. Most of these tools, and they make a lot of different ones, are self-explanatory. But if you don't have one of these tools, what do you do? And that's what I'm going to show you right now. All you have to do is take some grease, scoop it up in your hot little hands, and you take the bearing like so. What you're doing here is you're trying to force the grease up through here. So you'll see as I do it. Forcing it up in there. Come on, baby. Be nice if you do it a little quicker. Okay, you see, you guys see the grease getting forced? You see the grease getting forced right through the bearings there, the roller bearings? And then all you'll do is just keep going around in a circle till it has grease in it all the way around. So with the bearings all packed nicely, what you want to do is just put a nice thick layer right here on the outside of the bearing. I always do it pretty thick. And then on the race. But that's it. You don't have to pack this hub all full of grease. It doesn't do you any good. And now for the seal. And my hands are all greasy. But I usually put a little grease right here. Some people would say to use oil because grease is maybe fibrous. I don't know. I've never had any trouble. Maybe that's something to Google when you get bored sometime. I don't know. So now prepare your other bearing the same way we did the first one by packing it and then we'll put it on the trailer. Make sure you clean your spindle off here real good where you can inspect it. If a bearing has seized up on it, it'll spin around and chew it up, you know. So check that all out. It's got a little tiny bit of something going on, but I'm just not concerned. Some people are more particular than I am. If you are more particular, change it out. We'll just slip this on here very carefully. Make sure where your seal goes that that surface has been cleaned real good. Next, the bearing. I've already greased the inside, the race. And the bearing's always already been greased and we'll shove her in there. The washer and the nut. Now this is where it gets a little hairy. People will disagree with me on this. Uh, some people might agree. Anyways, I'm tightening this up pretty good. Snugging her down, you know. Next, I'm going to take it loose. And then, what I do is just like that. Tighten it up, you see. So now, it landed right in the middle where the cotter pin goes. Uh, you, you know... I just, yeah, I'm going to have to back it off a little bit. And that's where it's going to end up on this one. You don't want to burn the bearings out. You don't want them too tight. But you really don't want them too loose either. But in this case, I have no, no choice but to do that. I always like to put a new cotter pin in there. They're cheap. And it's just a safe thing to do. And last piece is just the cap. Make sure it's not loose or binding or anything like that. So that's it, you're done. Let's move on to the brakes. There are four nuts on the back side of this, the backing plate, and we will just take those off. There's two wires back here on the brake. I'm just going to snip them off of there. They go to the magnet. I went ahead and cleaned the spindle. Now's a good time so you don't get anything all over your new brake shoes. 
This piece right here, there is a right and a left. So you need, need to make sure you get the right one on the right side. See, it says right hand right there. Maybe you can't, but it says it. We'll just bolt around there. The reason there's a right and a left side with these is so that when the magnet engages, it swings the right way to open up the brake shoes. I soldered the new wires on in the back here, and now the drum will go on. It's the same deal as the first hub. Just put your bearing in, put your seal on, and throw your drum on there. Nice and easy. Nice. This front bearing, kind of note where your hole is here on your axle. That way you'll know where to put your cotter pin in. Washer, nut, Now all we need to do is adjust the brakes. I'm gonna show that to you on the bench. So now it's time to adjust the brakes. And how are we gonna do that? Here's the adjuster right here. How do we get to it from the back side, guys? If you look back here, this has a rubber plug in it, like that. So you just remove it, and then you will take your screwdriver and or brake spoon, and you'll come in here and you'll just, you'll crank it. You'll crank that uh, adjuster and the brakes will tighten up and you only want to tighten them up till you feel a drag on the brakes. You don't want to over tighten them. So let me see if I can show you this thing turning. That way you'll understand what's happening here. See how that turns and that will tighten up the brakes. Right now, I, I think it's loosening them, so you gotta make sure you go the right way. We'll go this way, and that's making the brakes tighter. Just like that. So now we'll do it on the trailer, and I'll show you how they drag after I get them adjusted up. The best way to adjust these brakes is just to crawl on under there, take a little flashlight with you so you can see in the little slot, and then take your screwdriver in there and adjust them. That way you can see it and make sure you're not going the wrong way or whatever. When you get done, they should spin like that. They shouldn't be too tight, and they shouldn't grab either. Listen closely, you can hear them drag just a little bit. At this point, you know as much as I do about repacking the bearings, putting seals on, and adjusting these brakes, installing the brakes. So now I'm gonna do the other side, we'll test the brakes, and then move on to the next repair. So we'll check this side first. It's spinning. My beautiful assistant is in the truck. And she will now hit the brakes. You hear that audible hum I was talking about? And look at there, they're locked up. Let it, let it loose. And they're loose. Let's check the other side. Okay, I'm on the other side. So now listen, guys. Listen for the audible hum. Hit the brakes. See there? and they're locked up. Turn them loose. And they're loose. Brakes are working great. All four axles, as far as hubs, brakes, and all that kind of stuff, is done. And looky here, a happy face on the floor from that drum. Isn't that nice? Time to refurbish the leaf spring suspension. So this is the kit I got off of eBay for like 40 bucks. You get two equalizers, these shackles, or whatever the heck you call them, these pieces here, which I'm not going to use these, but I'll save them if I need them. Mine I don't think are wore out there. And those have to be, those pieces back there have to be welded to the trailer. If yours are wore out, you just need to cut them off and weld them on there. The only thing noteworthy about this, really, is that these bolts right there, see on the end of these bolts, they have like, where they kind of lock in. So you need to be prepared to hammer them out from this side and know that they might stick a little bit right there where they have those, I don't know, grooves or whatever. Uh, the other thing is, these are sold separately and these are for your leaf springs. So you need eight of them if you have a tandem trailer. So this stuff is pretty self-explanatory the way it goes on, but I'll go ahead and demonstrate one side 
and we'll just do it in steps and light speed. And it's just that easy. You guys should be able to just slam it together and have no issues whatsoever. Check it out. There she is, all put together. But yeah, guess what? That's not reality at all. The truth is I had nothing but trouble throughout this whole assembly process. Even my impacts wouldn't work right. I had to beat and bang my guts out for every single bolt that would come out. And even on assembly I had to beat and bang my guts out. Ah, rats. And don't get me started on filming, having to assemble things, disassemble them, Assemble them again because I forgot to film it. Wait till you see what happens here. So look at this garbage, guys. I was hammering that bolt in there because it's got those splines on them. And the head popped off of the bolt. The nuts and bolts were so cheap and crappy. They kept stripping out and breaking and stuff. I was so worried I hand tightened each one. And I even ended up welding up all the nuts on there because I didn't trust the cheap lock nuts that this kit came with. But don't worry guys, I cooled them off with a wet rag so we wouldn't melt our bushings, our new bushings in there. And that's reality guys, everything's not quite as pretty as it's displayed on YouTube or TV or anything else. That goes for anything. Mechanic work, relationships, things aren't always as pretty as they appear. Don't forget about the license plate giveaway. Your chances are really high right now, guys, on getting it. All you have to do is like and comment on this video or any of the trailer videos in the series and you could win this Kentucky license plate. It's time for this trailer to take its maiden voyage. I've got something I need to go and hopefully pick up and I'll have a future video on that if everything works out. I still have more work and modifications to do to this trailer, but this is all I have time for this week, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.